tradition you don't really have in democracy. And that goes for whether we're talking about traditional democracy or, or like electronic democracy, the same principles apply. So, yeah, to get the people to participate, to get the young people to participate in particular, so that democracy has a future. And, uh, yeah, let people know that there are options. That's definitely the marketing sort of angle connected, obviously, to what I mentioned before. So, I think really all, all the challenges sort of become a bit insignificant in connection with this one, if you see what I mean. I could talk about improvements in, in the software, could talk about connecting workflows so you have control over uh, like the connection between the uh, internet uh, part going on with the uh, real live meetings and all kinds of stuff. And we have lots of plans and lots of thoughts for how to improve that. But all the software in the world is not really going to do any good or bad unless somebody uses it. So. I think in general we just have to get people to participate and then when the problems come up and they will come up for sure I mean that's just one part of being being in this industry and is and then you fix them and you make it so that the problems really hopefully just go away instead of finding ways to close them out there is a question that we always address in this conversation uh, in these conversations that we have, we hold, we help with many these many organizations and people. And this question is, what, how would you define the concept of democ democracy? What is democracy? Because uh, there is sometimes uh, these conceptions that democracy are institutions, or democracy is voting, or democracy is having political parties. So, what is democracy for you? at the Citizens Foundations and for you personally, how would you define it? Uh, the Citizens Foundation doesn't really have its official definition of democracy. Uh, it's really at a lower level than the Citizens Foundation needs to operate because we have tools that work for lots of different kinds of democracy, if you see what I mean. You can use them in so many different ways that it would be limiting to. But anyway, uh, my personal uh, view on democracy or, uh, is more or less a system that uh, people agree on to work together and make decisions together and in a, in a way that uh, makes the highest percentage of people possible happy, <laughs> if you see what I mean. It's not a way for 50.1% of people to, uh, to rule over the 49 plus percent of people is a system which we need to uh, continue to improve so that we can get the highest amount of people happy with it. Because then we have the highest amount of people active in it as well, and that's basically what a healthy society needs. But then, like I said, this is my personal point. I don't... Robert? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's... You know, on the, uh, like, your definition of democracy. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, you know, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. sort of. cool. Okay. Um, do we have maybe uh, 10 or 15 minutes more? Yes. Um, um, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe 10 minutes. Okay. Ten, ten, maybe, ten, yeah. 10 minutes, yeah. Okay. yeah. To, uh, but what do you think is um, the possibility of a domestic democratic uh, process to take place considering uh, the big pressures? of uh, international actors. We heard, for example, of the experience of Greece and Spain. And um, so maybe what's the future of these kind of concepts, considering uh, the sort of pressures in many domestic democracies are having today in this globalized world? How these right. projects and how these initiatives will be able maybe to manage this kind of pressure? Well, I, well, I don't. I think one thing that we are uh, uh, sort of focusing on sort of on a research level at the moment is to uh, uh, use uh, uh, artificial intelligence technology to, uh, as you know now, with like Google and Facebook and uh, all those online services are using a lot of algorithms, you know, that decide what we read on Facebook and what we see on Google search or, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of artificial intelligence that is sort of curating, you know, the information we see. And uh, for, for example, on Facebook, then, uh, the, you know, the curation is all about uh, showing you things that you interact with and, uh, you know, sell advertisements. 
So it's all about, in, in, for end, the bottom line for Facebook and their algorithms is to maximize their advertisement revenue in terms of the information they show you. Uh, we very much uh, see a future where we can employ the same sort of technology, the same sort of algorithms to actually watch uh, what, uh, what, the, uh, uh, what governments are doing, uh, what corporations are doing, and basically and, and helping like us op opportunities for you yeah. to participate in your yeah. community and basically helping us uh, helping people to be uh, you know better active citizens yeah okay uh, do you have any further talks and maybe considering your experience how would you um, considering that we are also trying to explore uh, direct and electronic forms of engagement uh, particularly here in colombia um, and based on your experience, what are your further talks on this topic? How, what do you think uh, uh, are the main um, dangers of, uh, the, of democracy and electronic democracy that maybe we are not able to realize today? And how do you think uh, we should manage uh, to handle these dangers, these perils and dangers? Well, 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 I, well I think that there's no, that there's no dangers in, in, in starting to experiment. And you need to experiment, uh, start experimenting right, you know, like right away. There's no, there's no uh, one perfect solution that's going to fit uh, everything. There's no one perfect software or, or approach. Uh, you need to experiment to see what works for you. And, uh, and I mean, we would be happy, uh, I mean, certainly to, uh, you know, if, if you know somebody who wants to do some experiments with our software, for example, we'd be very happy to support that sort of effort, you know, for example. The only danger probably, which is not really a danger at all while you're still experimenting and still trying out different things, the only possible danger that I can foresee really is that if you make a legislation around uh, electronic democracy and you somehow make it so that you can't change it back or you can't, it gets stuck, if you see what I mean. Because you have decided, oh, it needs to this such high majority, or it needs this and such and such conditions to change this because this is really important. And if you find yourself that you created like a lock locked system, which isn't really working, but I mean that's a really far-fetched possibility. Other than that, every sort of uh, possible danger is something that you can say, oh well, that didn't work. Let's try to make it more like that. But obviously some people will use this to sort of further their means but that's what's happening with representative democracy the world all over is that people are using that to get their own agenda across and obviously those kinds of dangers exist in electronic democracy but you shouldn't discuss them in that context but in the context of democracy as as a whole if you see what i mean it's just one more application of whatever kind of problems with democracy we could talk about. Okay, uh, well, thank you uh, for this uh, conversation and uh, we hopefully uh, know much more about you, much more about uh, your experience in Iceland and in around the world with your platform and with your organization. So thank you both, Robert. And thank Tuna. you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Okay, okay, take care. Thank you. Bye.